Let's talk about the circumstances that can change the resting membrane potential of excitable cells. To begin, you'll have to know that sodium, chloride, and calcium ions are higher in the extracellular fluid, or ECF, and that potassium and magnesium are higher in the intracellular fluid, or ICF, of neurons. What if leak channels for sodium were added to the membrane of the neuron? This would increase the permeability of the cell to sodium. How would this affect the resting membrane potential for the neuron? Remember the law of diffusion. You must first determine which way sodium would go. The law of diffusion says that it would go from high to low, and sodium is higher outside the cell compared to the inside, so it would come into the cell. Sodium is a positive ion, so after it crosses the cell membrane, what effect would this have on the inside of the cell, or RMP? If you said make it more positive or depolarize, you are correct. What if leak channels for chloride ions were added to the membrane, or the cell membrane became more permeable to chloride ions? First determine where a chloride is highest, so you can tell which direction it would diffuse. It's higher outside, so it would go down its concentration gradient and come into the cell. Chloride is negative, so after it crosses and comes into the cell, the inside of the cell, or RMP, would become more negative, or you could say it becomes hyperpolarized. What if leak channels for calcium ions were added to the membrane, or the cell membrane became more permeable to calcium ions? First remember where calcium is highest, so you can tell which direction it would diffuse. It's higher outside, so it would go down its concentration gradient and come into the cell. Calcium ions are positive, so after they cross and come into the cell, the inside of the cell, or RMP, would become more positive, or you could say it becomes depolarized. Here's a summary of how altering the permeability of the cell membrane to different ions can affect the resting membrane potential. We know that potassium leak channels are important in establishing the negative resting membrane potential. What do you think would happen to the RMP if the number of potassium leak channels in the membrane doubled? This would increase the permeability of potassium and increase the potential for a positive ion to leave even more. So ask yourself, after potassium crosses the membrane and leaves, what would this do to the RMP or inside of the cell? If you answered that this would increase the potential for a positive ion to leave, and would make the inside more negative or cause hyperpolarization, then you are correct. Another question for you. What would happen to the RMP if the number of sodium-potassium pumps in the membrane decreased? Well, remember that the sodium-potassium pump establishes the gradients for sodium and potassium. As we've discussed, the potassium gradient is very important for establishing the resting membrane potential. Ask yourself, what would less pumps do to the potassium gradient? Since they pump potassium into the cell, it would make the concentration of potassium inside the cell a little lower. Now would there be as big of a concentration gradient for potassium to leave through its leak channels? No. If we decrease the potential for a positive ion to leave, then this would depolarize or make the RMP a little more positive. The mistake people sometimes make, they see that potassium is lower inside the cell, so they automatically think this would make the inside less positive. No, you always have to consider how it would influence the gradient for potassium. If potassium is lower inside the cell, would it want to leave more or less? it would want to leave less, so you'd be retaining more positive ions, making it more positive inside the cell, so depolarization. If potassium levels in the blood get out of normal range, the resting membrane potential of excitable cells like neurons and muscle cells can be affected. High blood potassium levels is called hyperkalemia. Emia means in the blood. Blood levels correspond to concentrations in the ECF, or extracellular fluid, which is the fluid around the cells. Before the hyperkalemia, we had normal levels of potassium in the ECF. 
Now with hyperkalemia, ECF concentrations of potassium are higher. When potassium levels are higher in the ECF due to hyperkalemia, does this increase or decrease the potential for potassium to lead the cell through the potassium leak channels? With hyperkalemia, the concentration difference between the inside and outside has decreased, so potassium doesn't want to leave as much. Decreasing the potential for a positive ion to leave will depolarize the cell. Potassium injection is sometimes used for lethal injection. These injections cause hyperkalemia and will cause the cardiac cells to become more depolarized, leading to cardiac arrhythmias. Another scenario, what if sodium levels go down in the blood? This is called hyponatremia. This would make sodium levels go down in the ECF also. How would sodium levels being lower than normal affect the RMP? Even though the gradient for sodium has decreased, remember there are little or no leak channels for sodium. So sodium cannot enter the cell, so there would be no effect on RMP. What about hypokalemia? This would also mean lower levels of potassium in the ECF. This lower level of potassium in the ECF would increase the concentration difference between the inside of the cell and outside. So potassium would want to go out more. How would a positively charged ion like potassium leaving the cell affect the resting membrane potential? Greater potential for pot potassium to leave would cause hyperpolarization. Another scenario, what if sodium levels go up in the blood? This is called hypernatremia. This would make sodium levels also go up in the ECF. How would sodium levels being higher than normal affect the RMP? Even though the gradient for sodium to go into the cell has increased, remember there are little or no leak channels for sodium. So sodium cannot enter the cell, so there would be no effect on RMP. Altered calcium levels in the blood can also affect the resting membrane potential. Calcium tends to keep sodium channels closed. Under conditions of hypocalcemia, more sodium channels are open, allowing more sodium to enter the cell, causing the cell to be more depolarized and more excitable increasing the frequency of action potentials and bringing, bringing about excitatory conditions like paresthesias, twitching, and laryngospasms. Hypercalcemia has the opposite effect on the resting membrane potential of neurons. Calcium tends to keep sodium channels closed. Under conditions of hypercalcemia, more sodium channels are closed preventing sodium from entering the cell, causing the cell to be more hyperpolarized and less excitable, decreasing the frequency of action potentials, and bringing about conditions of less excitation, like constipation, lethargy, and muscle weakness. This concludes part two of the video series on electrophysiology. Thanks for watching.